Hi everyone, I'm Mary with Mary Greeley News. Thank you for joining me. Yesterday I was doing a bunch of research into what was going on with Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, and Mount Hood. He has some interesting facts that I found, especially for the magma system that feeds into Mount St. Helens. Here we have Mount Adams. That's part of the mystery. Uh, Mount Rainier. Let me pull this out and Mount Hood. There seems to be this huge underground magma system that feeds from Mount Adams up to Mount Rainier and Mount Hood. But it's got scientists babbled where along uh, the coastline all these volcanoes down here is Mount Hood. You know they're all lined up. And then we got Mount St. Helens that seems to be off on the west um, and they wonder what in the world, how did that one erupt and why is it? I mean, you can see how all the volcanoes line up. What happened with Mount St. Helens? Well, evidently, um, there is a system that comes from this, uh, mantle plume that goes to Mount St. Helens. Why? They don't know. They do know that, uh, there is an increase in magnetism. Um, I really doubt that has anything to do with drawing um, the magma towards Mount St. Helens. Yesterday there was an earthquake and I just picked one out. This is Mount Hood. Let me pull this over so you can see this earthquake at 1150 Universal Time. This is Mount Hood. Okay, and then we got Mount St. Helens. The signature was much stronger at Mount St. Helens. And this is volcanic. See this? This is not, not tectonic. And then we got Mount Rainier. That was the smallest of the signatures. Many of you know about the Farlon Plate. How we have the Juan de Fuca Plate, uh, which is sliding underneath North America Plate. Well, evidently, um, and it's only speculation with the geologists. Like I said, geology is way behind in sciences compared to other sciences. But the Juan de Fuca plate used to be part of the Celica plate. And they think, it's only speculation, but they think part of this plate um, didn't subside like the rest of the um, Farlon plate. And for some reason, it was hotter, more buoyant, the magma. And this is why the Mount St. Helens area, Mount Adams area, Mount Rainier area, let me pull this up, has the higher um, threat of volcanic activity. The Celica Plate was originally, they believe, 50 million years ago an area of spreading, just like Iceland's being spread apart. Um, one area is going east and the other side of Iceland's going west. Even crazier, they believe that this original plate before the Farlon plate, um, separated and subducted, had something to do with the curve of the track of the Hawaiian Islands. See how it moved here? But another thing that I found about this Celica plate is the rotation of it which is going um, clockwise and like in this direction just like the hands of a clock but that might have something to do with the quiet earthquakes and um, the stop and lock motion of every 14 months of these quiet earthquakes it's yeah, like I said, right now they really don't know much about um, the Celica plate, um, but it was part originally of the um, Farlon plate, which extends all the way, or parts of it as it's subducting all the way down to Mexico and South America. Here's another image from Wikipedia of the Celica from Vancouver Island to the Klamath Mountains in Oregon. It says here the shaded areas show near surface extent as inferred from the magnetic and gravitational studies um, that were done in 1987 and 1998. 
this blue dotted line, I don't know if you can see it here, but it almost corresponds with the area that is doing the clockwise motion. You know, there's so much talk about the Farallon plate subsiding underneath the uh, North American plate. And now we got the Juan de Fuca uh, fault line subsiding, and that's broken up into, what, three, four sections? But I had not heard hardly anything about this salsa plate. Here you can see various theories have been proposed to account for the volume and diversity of the Sicilian magnetism, etc. So they think the magma that's coming up from the mantle that's feeding into Mount Rainier and Mount Adams and Mount Hood, there's a weakening of the, the crust of the earth which uh, makes it easier for the magma to flow into Mount St. Helens um, rather than Mount Rainier, Mount, Mount Hood, or Mount Adams, which is absolutely crazy because we know that the uh, North American plate is slowly moving southwest, which would make the hot spot um, seem to be moving northeast. Uh, the hot spot doesn't move. Uh, the mantle plume does not move. It's the crust of the earth that moves. And like I said, it's moving uh, southwest. I did find another image on a research paper from ResearchGate of this salsa plate, which is green. And it kind of shows the clockwise motion. Like I said, this area has quiet earthquakes. I bet you... Um, whatever it is, part of the Farallon plate or the Celta plate, but it is related to this 14 months um, stop and lock and, um, yeah, of the quiet earthquakes. Let me pull this down for you so you can see the rest of the image. The shear zone broadens across the width of the rotating Celta block, um, necessitating extension of the northwest basin and range BNR and contracting across the Yakima fold and thrust belt. That is F N T H it says. Salsa rotation is consistent with the oblique convergence of the Juan de Fuca plate south of Canada. No shear deformation occurs where the Juan de Fuca subduction is normal. So does that also mean that we have a greater threat of these volcanoes erupting every 14 months. That's a good question. Have they looked into that? Then there was a paper about rocks where they found from the Celso plate fossil slabs attached to the unsubducted fragments of the Farallon plate. Here's where it talks about the Hawaiian Islands. The accretion of the Celso against the North American continent approximately 50 million years ago correspondence with the initiation of the bend of the Hawaiian Emperor Seamount chain was a major tectonic event associated with a reorganization of the tectonic plates. This is believed to have caused a shift in the subduction zone termination of the Laramide origine that was uplifting the Rocky Mountains and major changes in tectonic and volcanic activity across the western North America. And there's a few spots that they found rocks from the Celso, uh, which is the Olympic Mountains. And it says here, let me pull this over, the Black Hills in southwestern Washington. Um, and a small exposure on the north side of Olympic Peninsula near Port Crescent. And then on NationalGeographic.com, they got an image of this magma. Majority of it, like I said, is showing here Mount um, Adams. And for some reason, um, it's not going in this direction. It's going towards Mount St. Helens. Then on IFL Science, they got an image of this magma as it comes up through the mantle. There's Mount Adams. And way over here is Mount Rainier. You can see the plume. But they now know that part of the same magma system that's feeding these other um, large and threatening volcanoes is also feeding Mount St. Helens. And I, I've talked about how magma likes to 
um, float like a beach ball held under water and it always goes in the direction um, where the ground is the weakest the crust of the earth is the weakest and that's why Mount St. Helens blew out from the side and not the top here it says previously it's been thought that most of the magma that fills up the tanks of Mount St. Helens Adams and Rainier comes from the subduction of three minor tectonic plates beneath the North American plate they thought back then um, as the water was lost beneath the uh, Pacific Northwest the chemistry of the mantle there changes and subsequently generates quite profuse and violent volcanism at the surface but now they discovered this new hot zone and it raised all kinds of new questions and put a wrench in the previous studies so here's an image this is uh, USGS uh, earthquakes for the last seven days this here is Mount St. Helens um, the last one they got recorded here that they're emitting to is 0 0.4 that was on the fourth Mount Hood um, yeah they got three listed but none for that earthquake that I showed you that I had took as an example and then Mount Rainier I don't know if you can see this I'll try and pull this in a little bit uh, if I go in too far it doesn't really show it more earthquakes but still not the one um, yeah last one they got listed is on the fourth so here we have the spectrogram for Mount Rainier yeah we got an earthquake right there yeah and that is today oh that was yesterday that was on the 5th all right I suppose I should show you Mount Rainier today yeah look at all this activity look at it all look at that that was at the beginning of the day and this is at the end of the day and what it's currently showing Mount St. Helens on the 5th this is the day that I pulled the data now that was at 11 o'clock right here and then we'll go to today's view it going what's going on all uh, right we'll pull it down again this is Mount St. Helens and we do know that Mount St. Helens is recharging but it sure looked like Mount Rainier at the beginning of the day was more activity than what Mount St. Helens is showing all right Mount Hood we'll go to the full day for the um, fifth let me pull this over I'll come down to 11 o'clock there's that earthquake and we'll go to what the current view is here we go yeah more activity at the beginning of the day and yeah look at all these earthquakes now I'm going to show you this this is definitely volcanic they do have we can look at tectonic activity but this is volcanic so I'll make that very clear this is not from tectonic movement this is from what they're showing for uh, volcanic and then going back to um, Mount St. Helens yeah I would say Mount Rainier I'll pull it down go down to what it's currently showing anyways I thought that was interesting yeah we got this huge plume that's coming up from the mantle and you guys who follow me know that magma can come up from the mantle and have an eruption within 10 minutes of no warning at all hopefully hopefully there would be a warning of earthquakes and increased uh, release of gases and uh, things like that before that um, that's general I know they do have warning before but um, there has been eruptions of other volcanoes like I said in Japan and South America where there was no warning whatsoever and yes large earthquakes can cause a volcano to erupt there was a case in 1960 down there in South America I did a report about that where two days after they had a, a large earthquake um, one of the volcanoes erupted so if any thoughts or comments or questions put it down below
Thank you for subscribing. I'm also on Patreon. I'm also on Twitter. I put a lot of things on Twitter that YouTube loves to censor. Um, please stay safe, and I'll talk to you later. God bless y'all. Bye.